In this movie, we'll be talking about Flexbox. For this movie and the next movie, you can open up flexbox.html in your working files folder. If you open it up in the browser, you'll find these four fantastic links. We'll be going through these four links in this movie. So the first link is the Mozilla Developer Network on Flexbox. This is a great article that generally explains the concept. You'll often see scary diagrams like this, but we'll go ahead and go through them together. First, let's talk about what Flexbox is used for. It basically gives us a different way of laying out elements on our page. It's meant to solve a lot of the problems we have to deal with with inline elements and with floating. It's direction agnostic, which means you can go from left to right and very easily switch those elements from right to left. Additionally, you can switch from horizontal directions to vertical directions. Your main axis can go in any direction you want. Because Flex is a module, this means there are a number of properties. Those properties can apply to the Flex container and the Flex items. In this case, we have a number of Flex items inside of this larger area, which is considered a Flex container. Flexbox lets you position these elements within the Flex container in a number of different ways. Now there is a lot to this specification, so we're gonna go over the more basic and more useful parts of it. If you're seriously considering using Flexbox, don't just stop at these two lessons. Go ahead and do a lot of reading. The Mozilla Developer Network website, as I said, is a fantastic place to start. Let's also take a look at Can I Use. We've used Can I Use to look up all these different browser properties, and we'll find that if we search for Flexbox, support is very strange. IE 9 and below don't support it, which is no surprise. IE 10 does support it, but with an MS prefix. Even recent versions of Firefox don't support it entirely. They support an older version. Same with fairly recent versions of Safari. iOS, Safari, and Android certainly have a ways to come in terms of supporting Flexbox. Because things are so difficult, it can be useful to use a Flexbox generator. That's link three and four. We'll go over that in a moment. Let's look at our second link here. This is a number of Flexbox examples. Example one, if we turn Flexbox off, this is what the items look like by default. But if I turn Flexbox on, we can see the way these elements lay out. No floats are being used whatsoever. We also have an orientation example and alignment examples. Let's take a look at these alignment examples more closely. There's a property called Flex Pack, which lets you move things to the far left, far right, justify them with space in between, or center them. Now I said move them all the way to the left or all the way to the right, but the wonderful thing about Flexbox, as I said, is it's direction agnostic, which means this is not considered the left, this is considered the start point, and this is the end point. You can make those start points and end points vertical. That's the main axis. The cross axis is the axis perpendicular to whatever the main axis is. In this case, the cross axis is vertical. If we use flex align start, these items position at the top. End, they position at the bottom. And center, they position in the center. So just like that, we can take elements and vertically center them. Lastly, this is a very exciting one. We can take the elements and tell them stretch. That means they will stretch to 100% of the width of their flex container. You can also use flex to utilize remaining space. In this case, we have several items and we can add items using JavaScript. You'll notice what happens here. These elements are equally spaced. Now the JavaScript isn't doing anything other than adding new elements. It's not changing any of the Flex CSS. Previously, we would have to set each one of these to 33% width. And if we added another one, we would have to change all of their widths to 25%. Not in this case. In this case, we have Flex 1, on item one, three, and four, and flex two on item two. This means that item two is gonna be twice as wide as items one and three and four. We can continue to add items, and you can see that holds up. This element will always be twice as wide. In this example, we have the second item set to flex 20. If I remove some of these elements, you can see that indeed item two remains much larger than item one. Yet another thing that Flexbox allows us to do is reorder elements. In other words, 
the order in the HTML is not necessarily always the order that they're going to be displayed in. Previous to Flexbox, that was always the case. The HTML tended to dictate the order. Even when you floated things around, you were quite limited in the way you laid things out. 